Good yes. morning, sir. What's your name, please? My name is Julius Lewis, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, you have two files with us today. You also have some traffic tickets we're going to deal with first, where you missed some court dates. <clears throat> when you miss those dates, a judge issued an arrest warrant for you. You do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You also have the right to an attorney, and if you cannot afford an attorney, the court will provide one for you. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes. All right, give me one moment. I'm going to give you one date where you can address all of these tickets with this court and hopefully reach a resolution to them, if not on this date, at a future date. But you need to show up for those dates. Okay. I couldn't get this thing working. I think I broke it last week. Y'all excuse my smell, bro. Hmm? Excuse my smell. And when you no, but it's still part of I do smell. When you the court. First ticket, sir, is P1437668. The charge of disorderly conduct. Next ticket is P1499642. Refusing to leave active commercial establishment after request by owner. Ticket. B one two zero three nine six two zero. I don't know what the charge is. I don't know. I ain't heard. One two zero three nine six two zero. I don't know what the charge is. I don't Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me? No, I couldn't hear you, sir. but it's okay. Yes, sir. I couldn't hear you. No, no it's, not it's, it's it's not okay. You need to be able to hear me. Can you hear me now? I can hear you a little better now, sir. All right, take your V, one, two, zero, three, nine, seven, two, zero, harboring a vicious animal. Take your V, one, two, zero, three, nine, eight, two, zero, failure to vaccinate dog against rabies. Take your V, one, two, zero, three, nine, nine, two, zero, failure to vaccinate dog against rabies. Take your V, one, two, zero, four, zero, zero, two, zero, failure to vaccinate dog against rabies. And ticket V1204520, tether dog restraint violation. Sir, these are all misdemeanor charges. Maximum penalty you face on each is up to 93 days in jail and or a $500 fine. I'm going to set aside the arrest warrants. Enter a not guilty plea on your behalf and give you a personal bond. Your next court date for these matters is May the 7th for a pretrial in front of Judge Perkins here in 36 district court. Now you've got two other matters today. One's a retail fraud and one looks to be significantly more serious. So we'll do the retail fraud first. That's going to be case 21-06191. I'm sorry. 21-061901. State of Michigan versus Julius LeVar Lewis. Counsel. Thank you, Steve Vincent, for the people. P71917. Good morning, Your Honor. Kashama Kirkland on behalf of Mr. Lewis, who has been advised of his rights, wishes to stand mute and waive the formal reading. What will enter a not guilty plea on your client's behalf as to bond? Uh, on the retail fraud, Judge, I believe it's a KPS. I have it as a $3,000 yeah. cash or surety. Um, That's correct. I have actually, I looked through the register of actions, Judge. It appears as though there were two failures to appear, but only one was formally issued. There was one about three months prior where the defendant didn't appear. He wasn't given a formal capius at that time, but it was three months later when he failed to appear. That's when he was given the $3,000 cash assurity. Um, Judge, I believe this is a, um, a felony, and I didn't object to this, seeing as though we have a more significant matter before the court. If defense counsel ended up contacting, I believe it was Judge Archer at the time, we didn't object to it. Mm -hmm. Judge, at this time, um, Judge Williams was not willing to change his bond, so I understand it's, it has to stay the same. We just request re, uh, um, redetermination. Thank you, sir. While this case is pending, you're to have no contact with any Home Depot. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. I, I haven't had it. I right. think, yeah. Actually, I, sir, I moved to San Antonio. You do have a right to uh, speak, sir. Your counsel may want to advise you before you do that. No, sir, I, what I, I was going to say is 
I'll find Mr. Lewis, I have to say. just briefly, you can you can speak. Just let me let me advise you before you speak. I just want you to let let you know this is being broadcast on YouTube. You have a prosecutor and a judge here. I don't want you to say anything that's going to hurt you. I know we interviewed you this morning. I have everything that we've said in our interview, and I and I plan to argue in your favor. Um, I don't think I'm going to advise that you don't say anything. You have that right, but you should not say anything. And just allow me to to argue on your behalf. No, I can't let you do that because you don't know my behalf. Like I know. It. Well, all right. Well, sir, why don't we do this? Since you do have this very serious case, why don't we get that case called and then you can uh, determine whether or not you want to say anything uh, during this case. This would will like be to case say something 24. About a very serious case. I would like to say okay. something about I didn't get a chance to go that, over this sir, with my let me get the, let me get let me get the case Marina. called, sir. Yes, There's a time yes, and place for you yes, to speak, and now is not it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I apologize. I, I did it wrong. Thank you. I Thank you. This is case. Okay. This is case 24056522, State of Michigan versus Julius LeVar Lewis, counsel. Thank you, Judge Stevenson, for the people. Uh, good morning, Judge. May I just ask Mr. Lewis if he wants me to represent him? Because I don't want to force representation. And I believe what he's just stated is that he does not want representation. Thank you. Um, just uh, 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 let me let me just touch up something on the retail fraud case. There will be a bond redetermination date uh, this Wednesday in front of Chief Judge McConico, and that will be April 10, uh, Wednesday morning. OK, now uh, as to as to uh, this case, Mr. Lewis, uh, I think counsel raises a reasonable question. Do you want her or her office to represent you for purposes of today's arraignment? I am trying to get her to represent me, but I'm speaking on the actual uh, retail fraud case as well as my case that I'm on. I want to represent me, but if I haven't had a chance to articulate and communicate with her to give her a sort of information that she can go back and investigate, what can I do about it? So I'll be being bonded over for no reason when I, we can all this get, get resolved basically now before the prelim. She don't have so, any information sir, and I'm trying to convey to you. Uh, Okay, let me answer your what you're indicating. I would like as her to, to represent last, me, yes. Okay, great. Now, as to the last case, there was a capius in the file that I do not have the authority to change. So that's great. why that case was set for $3,000 cash. I don't, despite the fact that I wear this fancy robe, don't have the authority to change that, okay? Uh, absolutely. All right. Yes, sir. Now, absolutely. As, to, as to this, okay, as to this case where I have... Uh, the authority to set bond because there's not a KPS in the file. Do you feel you've had adequate time to speak with your attorney this morning? No, I didn't have enough adequate time to speak with my attorney to convey to her all the things that had transpired. There were some things that needed to be done. I made a report nope, not pertaining a, to this case not, I'm on. Sir, 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 not a problem. Uh, DDC, can you put him back on camera too and let counsel speak with him uh, for some additional time, please? Thank you. Sure will. Come on, y'all. That ain't me. She ain't want to hear me. They ain't want to hear me. I ain't bad that shit. It's my life. Judge, can I just have one second to give the, his, his packet to my colleague? Good. Got three. Excuse me, you fine, sir. Excuse me, sir. I didn't want to bump you all this. Don't worry about it. Recalling case 2405652, State of Michigan versus Julius LeVar Lewis. Mr. Lewis, do you feel now yes, that you've had sufficient time? Yes, I talked to the uh, head attorney. Okay. All right. And, and yes, sir. I'm sure you advise you not to say his... anything. So. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Counsel, your appearances, please. Thank you, Judge. Again, good afternoon, Steve Benson for the People, P71917. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Kashava Kirkland on behalf of Mr. Lewis, who has been advised of his rights, which is to stand mute and waive the formal reading. Court will enter a not guilty plea on your client's behalf as to buy. Uh, regarding the armed robbery, Judge, we're going to be asking for a $40,000 cash. We're also going to be asking for monitorization. Um, Your Honor, the defendant, we feel as though, is a, is a danger to the community. We also feel as though he's a flight risk. Your Honor had just arraigned him regarding multiple failures to appear. In a previous, I believe it was um, a felony matter. It was the retail fraud first degree. And now we have a defendant here allegedly using box cutters, cutting somebody in the face because...
they wouldn't buy a song that this individual allegedly was telling that individual to give him money for. He ended up taking the money that that individual did have on his person, and then he subsequently allegedly ended up cutting that individual up with those box cutters. Judge, we do feel as though this defendant We do feel as though this defendant is a danger as well as a flight risk judge. Um, and respectfully, we're going to be asking for that cash to keep the community safe. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm just looking for one fee. Oh, and as well, Your Honor, while um, defense counsel is looking at that, we do have prior um, assaultive past here. We have that armed robbery. Um, we have actually multiple uh, felony convictions. Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, so um, we're going to ask for, um, per Mr. Lewis's request, we're going to ask for a high personal bond in this case. If not, a 10% bond. And Judge, I do believe that this case at least warrants a 10% bond. Um, I'll, I'll start with the, the, the obvious. He is born and raised in the Detroit area, uh, lifelong resident. Um, he is currently... Um, he has some pretty serious me medical conditions where he is taking nine pills a day and he's not receiving his medication while in custody. So um, custody is not uh, being in custody is not conducive to his health. Um, Mr. Lewis states that this is a false report that, you know, what's alleged in this is, is not at all true. And I just wanted to point out to your honor, no, there's nothing to corroborate anything that's li listed in this report. The complainant states that, you know, there was a brutal attack where he was cut in the face with a box cutter. And then he goes to the, to the precinct um, no, no box cutter has ever produced, you know, Mr. Lewis has never found with this $20. Um, this is alleged to have occurred outside. No one, like no other neighbors corroborate the story of what happened. Sounds like these two have some type of dispute over a saw that was loaned. Um, and that the complainant came to the police report and stated that a, a small cut on his cheek, which a small cut is how the police, you know, characterize it, um, was caused by Mr. Lewis in a box cutter that was never produced. So I, I just ask this, the, your honor, you know, give, consider that high personal bond, if not a 10% bond in this case. No hospital report on he lied. So just curiously, counsel, how would you expect the complainant to produce a box cutter which was allegedly yielded by the defendant? Judge, I think, well, I, so I don't, I'm not gonna say how everybody should respond to, you know, incidences of violence, um, but he didn't call the police to that location. He didn't say, hey, hey, police, can you hurry up and get here because this person is attacking me. This is where it happened. He, I don't, I don't know how much time later, you know, decided he's going to go to the the police station and and initially stated that a, a completely a complete stranger um uh, came came to him, you know, and, and robbed him and, and cut his face. And then later uh, admits that this is somebody that he's known for forty years. So, um, I, I mean, I think there are some inconsistencies and in, in, in not enough corroboration in this case for a high cash bond. Oh, I won't speak so bad. Anything, Mr. Vincent? Uh, the complaint doesn't have a prior armed robbery conviction. The defendant was positively ID'd. And I don't think there's anything in the record that supports that they knew each other for over 40 years. Um, I do yes, believe there that there's some type of familiarity, but that leads to the idea that there's a high likelihood of conviction. So respectfully with that judge, the people just would rest on what we previously said. Excuse me. And what was the Four thousand cash with monitorization, Judge. Thank you, Counsel. Your client wants to say so. So, Mr. Lewis, this is your case. I am. I, I am going to advise you, just like I've previously advised you. You know, not to make any statements on the record, as they may be harmful to you. Um, and this is for all recorded. This is a broadcast on YouTube. You have a judge. You have a prosecutor. It's. It's not a good idea to make a statement here. Ultimately, the decision is yours. Okay, I would like to make a statement. First of all, Mr. Childs, I've been knowing for 40 years. I was raised at 17239 Shield Street, right down the street from Mr. Childs. First, I, that's Mr. just, just a clarity. Okay, yes, I won't I, say nothing I, else. I'll have to okay, go for it then. You're right. She wants me to be in for, for nine months in a county jail. She's, she's doing she's doing a very good job of representing you, sir. You're facing a life yes, offense is. on these allegations. And but I, I didn't would do anything to be resolved. To take her counsel. 
I'm, th- I'm accepting her counsel, but I don't want to be. I am homeless. I just had social security hearing. I take nine pills a day. I'm finna but be look, in the county jail for seven, eight months fighting a case. I just want to clarify. Me. I just want to clarify I'm one thing. This is fighting for my life, Mr. Lewis. This is just the arraignment. This is just about bond. So, judge is actually going to give us your next court date, and that's where you fight the case, and that's where you tell your your side of the story. But this is just you're the arraignment. Correct. You're correct, but I also want because the prosecutor stated something that was untrue. I wanted to 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 clarify that this gentleman, his whole family. I know Mr. Childs and his whole family for forty years. It's about a saw. He never had a hospital report. He never been to the hospital. He never got, he never been to the doctor. He never did nothing. He ain't got no cut on his face from no boss cutter. Thank you, sir. All right, so here's what we'll do. Uh, while this case is pending, you're not to possess a firearm, a knife, a box cutter, or any other dangerous weapon. You'd have no contact with Mr. Childs. Should you post bond? None, none whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Should you post bond? Okay, should you post bond, you'll be on a GPS tether on house arrest. Bond will be set today at $25,000, 10%. Hold on, sir. It's my turn to talk now. I understand that, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he said he understands. $25,000, 10%. You'll have a bond redetermination hearing Wednesday morning in front of Chief Judge McConico, where he may or may not change that bond. Further dates after that will be April 16 for probable cause conference, April 23rd for preliminary exam, both in front of Judge Giles here in 36th District Court. Thank you, sir. You can step aside. Thank you, sir. Were the dates on both of those cases the same? I'm sorry, what? Were the dates on both of those cases the same, the KPS and the new case? Case number. Case number. SP 1510661 appearance for the record, please. Sherrick Harris on behalf of Mr. Lewis, please state your name for the record. Uh I'm not I don't have an attorney. I'm representing myself. I articulated that at the last hearing. Okay, I apologize. Thank you. All right. Today is the date. Good morning, Mr. Lewis. Today is the date and time set for a Ring on the bench warrant. I'm going to enter not guilty plea on his behalf. I'm going to give him a zero dollar bond. Uh, Mr. Lewis, you said you were here last time. Uh, why, why, why did you miss your date? I actually didn't miss the date. I actually sent you a motion today to show you a proof that I was actually in the hearing and I was locked out of the hearing after an hour of waiting. Um, as well as I sent you a motion for dismissal as well. Um, I sent it last week. Like, Yes, I sent it last week, but I resent it today, and I sent it in a uh, Zoom chat as well to the prosecutor, the clerk, reporter, as well as the clerk. I I didn't get that motion either of those motions. Uh, if you is there any way you 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 have available? You look at the Zoom message, right? I sent it to not only your email but the Zoom chat as well. At, I need it in my email. I don't I don't have I don't. I, I don't sent it twice. Zoom. I could tell you my email if you want to search it, but you should have it twice in your email. I resent this. What's your email? What's your email? Uh, Chris C H R I S. E W I E. Okay, I'm gonna uh, resend it at the moment. I'm gonna, my, I'm gonna put my email address in the chat and uh, make you know, this. I'll put my email so you'll have it. And send that, send that to me, and uh, we will have an opportunity to read that. Um, I'll confirm that you sent. I'll wait to confirm that you sent it to me, and I'll give you a date. The next court date is going to be a pre-trial date on May the 28th, 2024, at 8:30. You need to get a copy of that to the city attorney as well. Uh, I'm actually just sending it to the prosecutor as well. Daya Mason, is that her? Yes. Prosecutor? Yes, I did just send her attachment. If you could send me a, a confirmation that she received it. Oh, get, get it to her email address. So, Mrs. Okay. Mason, you put your email address in the chat as well so Mr. Lewis can get you a copy of that. I really that appreciate that. Of that motion. Of those motions that All right. I'm going to wait on that. Once I confirm that you gave me that, 
uh, I will uh, recall the case. All right, let's Thank pass. Uh, let's go back on the record with Mr. Christopher Lewis. Um, I, 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 do re I have received this, this motion. And I read the first couple of lines of it, um, and that I'm not concerned necessarily about the April, March 18th incident. Um, I, I don't I don't know what happened on that day, but you are here now, um, so we'll move we'll move forward. Excuse um, me, sir. I heard you say that you only read the first couple of lines. Is there any yes. way we could possibly take another case until you get the chance to uh, read the entire thing? It's only no, two pages. No, I can't. I'm not going to read this entire thing today. It's only like three paragraphs, the entire thing. The rest are just case sightings. All right, I'm going to I'm going to deny the motion. I will set the matter for Is there anybody get a written can you give can I get a written articulation as to why you're denying the motion? I'm denying the motion. Um because I would just appreciate a written excuse. Can I get a written not, articulation? I might give it to you in writing. I will what I Are will we on do, record? Are we on record? We're, we're on record. Okay, uh, is this court bound by the U.S. Constitution and Supreme Court rulings? Yes. Okay, you were denying my motion when I uh, said that I had Fourth Amendment violations, and you're saying that you're denying my motion without looking into it or granting me a hearing to go over my motion or give me an articulation as to why, a written excuse as to why? I want to make sure that that's what you're saying to me. You're asking uh, uh, for a change of venue, I'm, I'm, denying I'm, saying that, I'm, I'm saying that I know there's a motion for dismissal and I'm saying that you as an article uh -huh. one judge under the Commerce Clause, if you're not going to uh, uphold my due process and my Fourth Amendment, I'm saying that maybe we could change venues where I could get a real judge. Okay, I'm denying a motion to dismiss. Okay, I'll set what I'll set is I'll set a trial date for you so you can be heard on that on that type of form. I insist um, that the court give me a, 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 a written excuse as to why you're denying my motion so I could take that to the tenor, okay? Well, you can insist all you want to. Okay, a, I, I appreciate that. But I'm, I'm telling you, you're telling me today why you're not going to look into it or give me a hearing. That's so I can go over the evidence that I have to present to, to go with my motion. You don't want to do any of that. So I'm just asking that you can give me a written excuse that I could go take and complain against you on. Because that, that, that's violating my due process. You didn't even give me the chance to say we're going to schedule an a evidentiary hearing or something like that. You're going to sit up here and, and disregard that when I made genuine claims and put genuine evidence in there. Overwhelming. So at the end of the day, uh, like I said, there's no crime. This is a fraudulent charge. Y'all don't have, there's no suspect. There's no, y'all suspect me for no crime. There's no victim, no losses. Okay. And in a minute, it's going to be malicious prosecution. So I'm, I'm asking you to dismiss this charge or change the venue. And if you refuse to do that, I'm asking you for a written excuse so I can take it to the tenor, sir. That's what I'm telling you. Because if not, I'm going to go to the tenor without it and let them know that you refuse to give me a, a, a written excuse and you refuse to give me an evidentiary hearing, but you just straight denied it. When you just five minutes ago, you said you didn't even read it. Now you just denied it. That's conflict of interest. That's bias. That's all that. So uh, let's let's put it all on record. If you feel just as strongly as you feel, give me a written excuse. If not, let's change venue. Because you're an Article One judge under the Commerce Clause. This conflict of interest, you only here to make money, man. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no crime. Not, no, wait, ain't, no, ain't no victim or no man. walk, bro. I'm not, listen, hey, listen, hey, I'm not Look, 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 sir. Hey, sir. Hey, sir, hey, sir. respectfully, respectfully, you're an Article One judge under the Commerce Clause. You've been on the bench since, what, 21? Couple years? You need to talk to somebody. I'm asking you to give me an evidentiary hearing to go over my motion for dismissal with the overwhelming evidence or change venue. Because if not, I'm going straight to the tenor right after this. And that's on you, sir. You had this. You did this. Oh, all right. All right. Now, I'll let you speak. Straight like that. No. That's all we need. I don't want to hear any more right, from cool. you. It's cool. You made, I'm your, not, I'm you made your I appreciate you made your record. it. You, this is a due process, that this, this a due process violation. This is a due process violation right now. And the way y'all tried to railroad me when I was ready to argue my trial. 
I told you I was here to argue my trial. Y'all locked me out. Mr. Now you're trying Lewis. to start the process over. They're not Lewis. prepared to present a case. I'm telling you. They're Ms. not Harris, prepared to present Mr. an injured Mr. party. So what are we doing? Listen. 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 Please. Please. Do not say any more. You've already made your record. I've given you that opportunity. If you continue on, especially interrupting me while I'm talking, because I didn't interrupt you while you were talking. I'm not your bro. I'm not your man. And I'm not to be interrupted when I'm speaking. I gave you the respect and the right to speak. Just because you're unsatisfied with the, with the way that I ruled, then that's not my problem. You, you okay, take whatever recourse. Wait a minute. Let me say it. Let me say it. You take whatever recourse that you feel that is necessary. Now, what I can do, Mr. Lewis, is I can set you a jury trial date. And at that jury trial date, you will have an opportunity to represent yourself or do whatever you want to do and put all your proofs on the record by a jury of your peers and you can argue it that way, okay? Uh, I appreciate now, that, but I was still like a written... Um, you, get, you, you order the transcript. You order the transcript. It's in the transcript. The, you, you asked me to read the... Uh, couple of paragraphs that you made. Most of the paragraphs was referencing the uh, incident on March 18th as you, and, I, and, and I'm not even de debating or disputing it. I said, I'm not concerned about March 18th or any missed date. Um, I said that the most of what you're saying is in the, it, 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 it's, it's not, uh, you know, I'm not even going to hold you to that, but um, in paragraph two, uh, I um, or, or I want to emphasize that the initial charge against me in this court is fraudulent. I, I don't know that to be the case. That's why I'm giving you an opportunity to uh, to 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 uh, to have a jury trial, and they can make the determination. Neither the complaining witness or the prosecution is prepared at any point of this case to present an injured party or any reported damages slash losses. So it becomes abundantly clear that every proceeding taking place is strictly an attempt to seek funds where there is no crime uh, and not seek real justice. So we are giving you real justice because if you say that there's been no crime, then you have a right to a trial. And that's what I'm giving you. So I was assaulted, detained, and my property illegally searched and seized with no suspicion of crime at the hands of the complaining witness, Joshua Martin, and assisting officers. I do not consent to these fraudulent proceedings and demand that the court dismiss the charge immediately with the appropriate remedies. Um, and I'm just I'm dismissing the motion. Uh, uh, on, on based on that, because I am giving you a proper forum to argue your case um, uh, uh, or allow me the right to uh, change the proper venue of a of, of federal court where my U.S. constitutional rights will be upheld and not disregarded by Article One judge under the Commerce Clause. I don't understand that um, of the United States Constitution. Indicate indicating a clear conflict of interest. I do not wish to proceed with this matter. You don't have to proceed any further because I'm dismissing the case. He did cite some case law. Um, uh, it was at a Sharar v. Cullen, uh, 481 Federal 2nd 945. For a crime to exist, there must be an injured party, uh, 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 corpus delecti. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed on one because of the U.S. constitutional right. Um, Louisville versus Motley, 211 U.S. 149, uh, South 29, S. Period Court, CT 42. Any tribunal court finds absence of proof of jurisdiction over a person or subject matter, the case must be dismissed. The accuser bears the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So, I'm, I'm, I'm dismissing the motion, all right? So you, you want a trial date? Give me a, 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 a jury trial date, please, Ms. Mathis.
And you can get a copy of that record uh, uh, on um, of, of what we just made uh, by uh, going through the proper channels of the court to get the uh, court reporter to produce that record. I can't even get the court reporter to respond to my voice messages or you to respond to my email, the sir. He's not going to respond to your voice message. The court reporter is going to respond to you coming the 36th down. The district you told me to call her today that I was locked out of my trial date. I had a scheduled trial. The court told me to call her that day, and I called her that day, and I, she still hasn't responded. So I'm trying to see if you, if the court that you work for is trying to tell me think, how the appropriate channels and y'all y'all about... doing it different in y'all court. What am I to do? I you know? think you're talking about. I think you're talking about the court clerk and not the court reporter. This is a distinct. Yeah, I was told different. to call the clerk the day that I was locked out. Okay. The moment I was locked so out. So we have moved past that getting locked no, out. Sir, but that was my trial 18. date. Yeah, so I'm How giving you another. How soon can I get another trial date, sir? How soon can I get another trial date? That's what I'm asking. That's what we're trying to do now. I'm giving him a jury trial. A jury trial. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna let the jury of his peers hear what he has to say. It look like it's going to be. July the 23rd. Before you say that again, Ms. Mathis, just verify before you say it. Yeah. Please, the dates. Okay, I'm just checking. I know, but you're thinking I'm one of the people. Okay, I'm sorry. Good day. Yes. July 23rd, 2024, at, uh, at 9 a.m. Um, July 23rd. Uh, yeah, 2024 at 9 a.m. We'll have a final pretrial the day before. Um, why, all why would we need a final pretrial? Why would we need a final pretrial? Because I said I wanted one. But that's how you're protecting parties, your interest. You're protecting your interest and you're going to dismiss it on that day. So you're trying to play with me. You could dismiss oh it today. God. You literally, you literally, look, you literally, but a final pretrial, eight thirty. You violate my due process. You can't even give me a written excuse, but you want all this whole. Mr. Lewis, I know you don't want counsel, but is it possible we could talk in a breakout room? Excuse me, ma'am. I do. Excuse me, ma'am. I am in pro se. I'm in pro se. Go wherever you want to. Final pretrial of July twenty second. I am. I am. Is going to be July 23rd. All the parties must appear on the final pretrial day. And the drug and, okay. and the jury and that can be on Zoom. And the next day, the, the, the trial, jury trial date is in person. Have a very good day, Mr. Green. Best of luck to you. That's not my name. I don't know. Mr. Lewis, I'm sorry. Have a very good day. Best of luck to you. All right. Let's go move on. Put him out the room, please. Right. Bye. The all cast entity. Good talking to you. Goodbye.